So there's been a lot of talk about how AI is impacting media, and especially with photography, digital art, filmmaking, any type of art or creation that you can think of, AI at this point can basically do it. So if you've been on the internet, you definitely have seen memes from Dolly Mini, which is an open AI that basically takes any prompt that you give it and it'll give you six images that more or less are what you told it to do. Now, Dolly Mini is connected to the greater Dolly 2, which is the higher resolution version of Dolly. So there's a lot of videos about Dolly and how the algorithm itself works, but there's really not a lot about the actual creation of the product or the final products themselves. And what I wanna do is take you guys through Dolly 2 to see if it can create photography that's just as good as photographers today. Just a heads up, you have to be accepted into Dolly 2. So you can apply in the link below if you want. I'm not getting paid by open source to do this video, but I just wanted to kind of walk through my thinking of AI and kind of how it's affecting the industry as a whole. I might be out of a job soon, but let's just see. Okay, so as we can see here, there's like a lot of options when it comes to the style of the prompts that you can give. But from what I've been seeing in other videos and other people posting, the main thing about working with AI is that you have to dumb down exactly what you want created. So it might take a couple of tries for us to get where we need to be. A photographer that I love and that I feel like most of the photography community loves is Todd Heido. So I'm wondering if we can get a Todd Heido style image. Todd Heido style landscape. So already we can see that this is pretty photorealistic of landscape shots, but I don't think it exactly knows Todd Heido's style. So I'm wondering if we can dumb it down even more. I think it knows that Todd Heido is a photographer because these seem to be photorealistic. That almost looks completely real. The only thing is there's this texture element over it that you can tell, but if you told somebody that this was shot on film, some people might believe it. This one's a bit there. You can see the isolationism. All right, so let's go back. So let's do Todd Heido style. I think landscape shot, it's making it a bit wider than it needs to be. Todd Heido style shot of, how about creepy house? Let's see what happens there. Oh, content policy. I don't really think this um, goes against their content policy, but we can change it up, I guess. Image of house. Ooh, it's loading. That's a good sign. Okay, this is a bit, this is getting there. I like this one. That I, It looks like a reflection, but it also looks kind of like the sun's almost poking through the building. But this is pretty, this is getting there. To be honest, I feel like it's a bit overtly photorealistic, whereas Todd Heido has this surrealist style. A lot of glow in his works, and the color isn't exactly where it needs to be. It's definitely too muted, but that's impressive. Um, let's do image of house glow. This is getting there. Whoa. That, the colors look crazy similar. It, it looks a bit too painting-like. Maybe when it's analyzing darker images, it has a hard time seeing the detail. But I mean, this looks like a tree. This looks like a real tree. And this is all not real. This is completely generated, the entire image. It's not like I'm feeding it a visual asset. It's taking this from search histories. I mean, that looks pretty good too. It's even got the lights in there. I think the glow helps it. What is going on here though? That's a little weird that area. Something's wrong about this house, but it does create an eerie feeling, which I feel like Heido's work does as well. So it's capturing the essence of the work. And this is insane. This looks like a, like a long exposure gone wrong. Okay, so another thing we can do, since this one is pretty spot on to Heido's style, let's go ahead and hit some variations and see what we can get. Okay, so that's looking way more realistic at least in the house. And I'm wondering what's in the house there. Whoa. So different angles of it. Structure kind of changes a little bit, but still there. This is still my favorite out of the bunch though, the original image. I mean, the lighting looks more realistic for sure, especially the interior lighting coming out. It does chop off, which like here, there would be a bit more bloom in the windows. 
it wouldn't just stop here. Image of a, I'm gonna say film image. Give it as many descriptors as I can. Holy shit, that looks so cool. What is that? It's like a boat. I mean, that looks correct. I think the only thing, though, it's so strange. It gets almost everything correct, but there's just like certain things that I don't think a human would mess up on, which is like this chimney wouldn't be slanted like that. Everything else looks pretty spot on. It's really just that chimney that's throwing me off. But look at these bushes, the detail in the snow. It even has the film grain on the image, which looks amazing. The film grain looks great. This looks real. What's going on there though? That looks like a demon. But wow, I mean, look, it even put car tracks in there. It has a little uh, light leak. This looks, that actually, that actually looks pretty spot on to, I think, what Paido does. Like, I think it creates a very, very similar feeling to his images. Lost in almost like a Silent Hill-esque world. And it takes you into the image. I actually really enjoy that one. It's very soft, but, you know, it looks like the house is floating, but I like it. Let's do portraits. Portrait, photorealistic portrait of woman holding a pear. And then we're gonna do like 4K. I saw this video that was saying like, maybe it throws it into a different rendering structure where it makes it even more realistic. But let's, let's just see what happens. Holy sh Are you seeing this? Tell me that's not a person. Tell me that's not a person. That's crazy. Look at the, oh my God. It even has like the focal length is different. The nail shine. Okay, so I am seeing though, when you look at it long enough, you can tell the pear is going into the lady. But I mean, her skin, her eyes, the lighting, this looks insane. Okay, let's do 4K, um, but then let's also do, let's do in the style of somebody. Let's do Dorothea Lange. I've seen this oil painting of this robot about 800 times. Whoa. <laughs> this one on the right's definitely not nailing it, but this one, this one looks, that's a human expression. You could clean that up and it could be, people would be like, you shot that. That looks very Dorothea too, her expression, her right eye or her left eye is misty. Almost there. I'm wondering if we should do, let's switch this up. Let's do, port, let, instead of photorealistic, let's do portrait of a woman holding a pair in the style of Dorothea Lange. Let's do ultra 4K. Let's see what ultra gives us. This is interesting. I would say that it's capturing the black and white mood, but I think it's missing Dorothea's crispness on the image, it's a little too soft, but that's also the, the texture, these pixels it's creating. It's some weird warp pixel effect. I mean, that looks incredible. You could make that, you can make that an album cover. Let's just do a portrait of a woman. There we go. It's not in the style of Dorothea Lange, except maybe this one, which that actually looks pretty spot on. You could clean that up easily, but I mean, Come on, this is insanity. I know that we should all be fearing for our jobs right now, but I really, really love this. I don't know why, I just really think it's so creative. Wondering if it can get animals correct. Those are real. Like, look at this one. That's a real dog. Happy pug. Okay, I'll do that. Oh my God, that's film portrait of Happy pug. These are incredible. Incre I mean, it can really do animals really well. It has a harder time with faces, at least with photorealistic stuff. Oh my God. Like, are you kidding me? It's a, that's a real dog, man. <laughs> Look at him. I'm in awe over this. Okay, I love elephants. Let's do film portrait of elephant. That, that's a real photo. That's a photo taken in the 90s on like a disposable. That looks like a disposable film photo. So does that one. Oh my God, this is crazy. Okay, let's do art, art portrait of elephant. Let's see what happens. Well, this one doesn't have eyes. That's not great, but I mean, these look incredible. Let's do art portrait of elephant, black and white, sharp 4K. These are crazy. There's, there's, I'm cheating a little bit because I made this before. So I think why 
it has a better time dealing with animals is that animals are not as different as I think humans are. And so it's having a hard time throwing together a lot of the different like looks that a human could have because there's just so many options. So I think it's getting a little confused and that's why it's so unrealistic looking. But there's some images that just look crazy real. I mean, look like real people, so I don't know. It's, it's a toss up. A couple of takeaways is it's still not real when it comes to human faces. And I don't know if that's just because it's not fed enough information yet and it probably will be down the road, but it is insane how it can do very, very complex images and i'm sure there's going to be jobs of people just being able to use this and search things for companies and to create marketing assets and all that stuff and as long as you credit dolly they probably won't care but yeah it's a, it's scary but it's also exciting i don't know there's something about this that is like fun and i think can be used in such a cool creative way but it is concerning i, I do think some people's jobs will be cut unfortunately but it might change there's probably going to be new jobs created from this but yeah creativity i don't think a, a robot necessarily can have a one-to-one -one when it comes to human creativity and i think there's always going to be a human at the at the wheel but who knows i mean maybe algorithms can create these things for us down the line that can compete with humans and you know human works but yeah i'm interested to see what you think and also if you leave a comment and if i get enough comments i will put whatever you comment into dali and see what happens but you have to follow the rules otherwise it's not gonna work anyway photography is still cool dali is cool and shit is changing but that's okay